hi everyone. Good morning. I'm just going to set this all up. Just give me one sec. Welcome back everyone. I am Fifi McLeod and I'm Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. I'm just going to take a second and I'm going to load our video. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to give everyone a second to come in and I can get right into it. Good morning, everyone. It's um, 9 a.m. in uh, Atlantic Canada. I know it's probably um, much later for everyone in the UK. And I just wanted to start by saying that my heart goes out to all of you guys in the UK this week um, with the passing of the Queen. And I just wanted to let you know that you guys have my love and support. So I just wanted to let you know that my heart goes out to all of you. So today we're going to go ahead and I have cut the, the journal um, sheets from from the um, four song kit. So we're going to make tablets and we're going to make a matchbook uh, and a matchbook tablet. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So the first thing I want to do is take, um, so I have these pre-cut. So you can use anything. Um, these were from the kit, um, from one page. So I cut these all out, but you can use um, scrap pieces of paper. And you can layer them different ways. And I'm going to show you two, two different ways to do this. And um, I'm going to take my paper floor. And the first thing I'm going to do. So I've got. Whoops. Sorry guys. I've got um, this pattern on the front. And then I have a nice burgundy on the back. So the first thing I'm going to do. Is put it into my paper trimmer. And I want to cut it at exactly four inches. And I want to do this 4 by 12. So this is for the actual matchbook journal. So there, I've got it. And it's it's a, a fairly thick card stock. So I want to do this 4 inches um, in width by 12 inches in length. So I now have a piece of this. And then what I want to do is... Come in here. And I want to approximately measure. And I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So basically, for my tablet, I just want to make sure that I have enough here where it's going to um, where it's going to come over. So I want to leave it kind of like this. And I'm just going to eyeball. And I can take my pencil. Uh, I just need to grab a pencil. Sorry, guys. Here we go. And I'm just going to make a, like, a little tick. Here we go. And then I can sort of eyeball um, where I want my markers to be. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put this into the paper trimmer here. And I can cut this from here. I'm going to move my blade to approximately here. There we go. And then here. And I can line that up. Perfect. So I have something that looks like this. And then I'm going to use um, some kind of a corner rounder. 
or a rounding tool. And I'm going to quarter round this. And I have two settings on here. I have a, this is the We Are Memories Keepers uh, Cropodile Corner Chomper. So I have a big one and I have a small one. Hi, Diane. Thanks for joining. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to corner chomp this. Um, and I don't have to do the top. I can just do the bottom because it kind of looks more finished. And so the, these are the two tools I'm using. The um, Cropodile from We Are Memories Keepers. And I have the um, Tim Holtz Mini Attacher. So this is his little stapler. It's like a little mini stapler. So then I'm going to take my little tablet of the... Um, the journaling pages that I have cut out. And again, if you don't have the kit, this was um, uh, my Forest Song dig uh, digital kit that I had done. If you don't have um, the kit, you can use any piece of scrap papers. It can be scrapbooking paper, it can be lined paper, coffee dyed paper, you can use anything really. And then I'm going to go ahead and I want to attach these so that I'm sort of um yeah I'm thinking that's probably perfect right here so that I'm sort of even and I'm I've got a good frame around it so I can go like this and I can go like that so it's gone all the way through my page everything looks good and I've made myself a little tablet and now what I like to do because I kind of like to make it look more finished so uh, because we're doing like a nature kind of theme journal, I just have this little piece of burlap here. And I just wanted to show you guys just by using some like textile kind of things, um, we can dress it up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a trim. There we go. And I'm going to grab my fabric tac just in front of me. Here we go. And I'm going to put some fabric tack right along here, just along the top, right like this. And it doesn't have to be um, directly onto the, like the, just the tablet portion. This is going to just be like a little fancy thing that we're doing. So I'm just going to do it right across the top of it, right like that. And it can kind of hang over. It's no big deal. And if, and if it bothers you, you just come in and give it a little trim if you want it to be more there more like symmetrical and it just gives it like that little bit of something and then if you wanted to and you had some fancier trim I could take something like my um uh, my braided gimp trim and I could come across the top like this and I might do that just to give it that little bit of something from here to here here we go I'm just going to put that little piece right across the top like that just to just to give it a little something there we go perfect and I can move my trim there just like this and if you've got any little pieces that you want to kind of get rid of I can just do that Probably have to replace the um, the blades on my trimmer. That's why I've kind of got um, like that edge going where it's uh, kind of like frayed. There we go. That's probably better. So just like this, and it's a cute little tablet. And the other thing I wanted to share. So this is a journal I'm working on. So I'm just going to kind of show you with this because it's handy. Um, this these are going to go into the other journal that we're working on. But just to show you, so if you've got a pocket like this. You're just going to take your tablet and you're going to slip it like this into a pocket and that's what it's going to look like. And then you have it for um, journaling space. So just a lot of fun. And um, these can be made anyway. You could um, do the same method and you could use a piece of packaging. You can use your scrapbooking papers. Um, you could, um, instead of using double-sided paper, you could just glue two pieces of paper together. So use what you have. Um, I've seen all kinds of beautiful little little tuck things like this done with um, packaging and just layering and, you know, doing fussy cuts and different things. 
So th th this is like the, the base of it, but there's so many things that you could do. I could even take it where I had this a little longer and I folded it at the top and did a flap. You could do that as well. I didn't because I wanted to show you that with this one. And um, this one's going to be like a matchbook style journal, like a little mini journal. And um, the other thing you can do too is I have a full stack of them here. I have like scrapbooking um, papers and all kinds of random um, patterns and different things. I'm going to be using some of these. So um, the same thing, you could just cut them all out as long as they're the same size and you just layer them. And you don't have to have them perfect either. Um, you can have them completely symmetrical, but you don't have to. You can always rip and tear the sides and have them all different sizes, different shapes, and they're like um, layered. And they could go from like biggest to smallest kind of thing as you go up. So there's all kinds of different ways to do this. But this is just the idea of making a cute little tablet that you can tuck into a pocket. So that's the first project. And then the second one I want to do, these are so fun. So these are a matchbook journal. So what I do is I would take... So I've cut this four inches this way, by tw and I left it the 12 inches of the of the um, double-sided uh, scrapbooking cardstock. And this is from the um, Heirloom Collection. And I just found a cardstock version of it. So basically, we just want to take the bottom, and we want to fold it up. And we're not folding it too high. Um, I just want to make sure it's straight that I've got that straight. It looks okay. So basically, it is um, approximately an inch um, and a quarter. An inch and a quarter? Almost, um, no, an inch and a half. Sorry, guys. So I've taken it about an inch and a half where I've folded it up. So this is going to give us a little pocket here. And then what we want to do is we want to take the top and we want to fold it down. So I'm looking to do something probably right about here. Right like that. And then it's up to you too. You can decide from here if you want to have it like this or if you want to fold it the opposite way and you want to have it like this. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do that. And I think I prefer it this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my art glitter glue. There we go. And I'm going to glue right along here, along the side. There we go. I'm at the last quarter of my of my bottle, so I have to wait for it to kind of. There we go. Or maybe I'm clogged. I could be clogged. There we go. Hi Jenny, thanks for joining. I had to um, back out of my screen. I think we're having um, issues with our internet today. I'm not getting my comments, so it'll do that if I have low bandwidth. So I just wanted to share that. So if I miss your comment, I will go back and I will answer all the comments and respond to everybody after. And um, thanks guys for watching. I can see I've got um, five viewers today. There we go. And then so I've done the two sides. So this makes it like a little, like a little pocket at the bottom. If you guys can see that. There we go. And then we have it that we're right to here. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to get this ready for signatures. And I have my, my all in front of me here. Um... And then what we can do, we can come in 
And what we want to do is we want to take our scrapbooking paper and we want to do it in a way that we are folding it all in half like this. And then we want to put the, um, the lip right into the lip here, if that makes sense, into the actual um, crease. And then all I want to do is take my pencil and I'm going to make a tick over here. And then I'm going to decide where I'm going to trim that. So you can use your paper trimmer or I can just um, line it up. And I'm going to cut this right along here. There. So I just kind of eyeballed it. Perfect. And I can do the same thing going forward. So for something like this, and that's going to create like um, two pages for each one. So I have this one here as well. So same thing. And I'm just going to keep adding them. So that tucks into that one, which tucks into this one. There we go. Like that same size and then I'm just going to do the same thing where I'm lining it up like this and I'm eyeballing and I can come over here and just give that a trim and then I know both will be perfect here and I'm just using some scrap papers that came in like a little scrapbooking sort of um, paper collection kind of thing. And I have some, oh, this is cute. And it has, um, this one on this side and it has the yellow on the other side. So they're just random, um, pieces of paper. So here's another one. And same thing, we're just going to line it up and we're going to cut it. And it's up to you how many that you want to do and each one is going to basically give us like our like two pages each kind of thing so it's like two four six pages and we could do a fourth one for eight because we don't want to make it too thick but again it's whatever your preference is and I like this one here this is kind of like a botanical one so we'll do this one and it is in the nature themed book And I'll add this one to it. There we go. And then when we take our four, we are going to put them like that. And then I want this one next on the inside here. And then this one like this. So essentially it's going to look like this. Now this is very basic and what we can do is we can stitch it in like this here if we want to with our with our all by doing a little three hole pamphlet stitch or you can run it across on your sewing machine which is probably what I would recommend for this doing it on your sewing machine. So then essentially we're going to sew them in on the sewing machine like that. And then when it's done, this top flap comes down like this. And then, oh, and then I like to tuck like a little um, journaling cards in here. So if you've got something like um, in, a, in North America, we have Project Life cards, um, the Tim Holtz pocket cards. Um, there's so many things that you can use. Or you can use little scrap papers. You can make your own journaling cards by using cardstock. Or you could, again, do something like this where we have our little tablet that we just made. And you can tuck it in like that. So that's another really fun way to kind of layer it and add your stuff in like that. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you is, this is my kind of my favorite part. So when we come down like this, essentially we need some kind of a closure here. So this is something I really love to do. So I have taken...
Oh, and I've lost it. Sorry, guys. Just give me one second to find it. I love um, Tim Holtz and Presslets, and I use them a number of different ways. And just for some inspiration, I'm going to show you guys for here. Um, this is one of the pieces that I like to do with, with my, like I showed here, my full leather journals. So this one, I've taken the same kind of um, material. This is done with um, craft stock vegetable glycerin, and I cover the whole thing, and then I crinkle it, take my distress ink, and I cover it in... Um, either vintage photo and walnut stain or vintage photo and ground espresso depending on how light or dark you want it and then I take gloss Mod Podge and I Mod Podge the whole thing so that's how I'm able to get this beautiful faux leather look and it doesn't even feel like paper anymore once it's done and I stitch around the whole thing and then I've done the same thing where I've cut a piece and I've taken one of Tim Holtz um, impresslets and I've used um, Pebo, sorry guys, I'll show you the product right here. Yeah, Pebo Gilding Wax, and I've used it in copper, and I've gone over the die cut, and that's how I've done it like this. But I use black cardstock, so I have the illusion underneath that it's black, like because it's black underneath, so it gives it the illusion that it is metal. And then I'm going to use this as a closure, like this. So the other thing that I like to do is put them on here so um I have some over here which is I'll just grab another one because I've misplaced the one that I had so these are great too um these are Tim Holtz medallions um you know what for this project let's use a big one I have a big one here and I'm using that nice burgundy color so yeah right like that and let's do, um, I've got copper, and then I have, um, okay, that's king gold. I really like the renaissance gold. Yep, yeah, right here. So I have quite a few of these, but this one here is the renaissance gold. It's more of like a, it's going to look really nice with the um, burgundy. And I have silver, and it comes in quite a few different colors. You guys can see that and very little goes a very very long way so I'm just gonna take my die cut here so you guys can see what I'm doing and maybe um so if you guys can see what I'm doing I will put that on there we go a white piece of paper that I've used for heat embossing okay um so you want to make sure that um, that's the wrong side you're on the right side and then I'm just gonna go into my product and again I only just touch it and I get like a really good amount. So this is going to last me like forever. I've already had this for two years. And I use it quite a bit on this stuff. And you literally just touch it. And it goes a very long way as you will see. And I like to put it on like sort of like this. And just rub it around with my fingers in a motion kind of like this. And it gives it that illusion that it's faux Faux, um, metal. This is one of my favorite products. It is oil based. So not only will this stick to your papers, um, it sticks to metal and um, foam if you're doing like three dimensional um, projects like, um, like steampunk projects or something. I've seen ladies do it on foam. Um, you can use this on your um, your molds. There's so many surfaces that this will stick to. It's really an amazing product. And it's um, called People Gilding Wax. And it comes in like six or eight different colors. Copper is kind of like your rose gold and I have it in king gold and I have it in empire gold. I have it in silver and platinum and then I have it in the renaissance gold. There. So you get something that kind of looks like this. And then I can decide to, oh, I wanted a little bit more here. And again, 
tiny little bit goes a very long way. There we go. And then we're going to come over here. There we go. And the drying time with this is pretty much instant. It doesn't really, it's not like paint or anything. It doesn't take um, time to dry. So then what I want to do is I'll pull out my papers because I'm going to stitch these in on the sewing machine after. I just realized, guys, I don't have my, um, my crochet thread at my desk. So that's, I'm sorry, guys, I wasn't prepped for that. It's been a lot um, the last couple weeks with the kids going back to school and stuff. So I haven't had too much time in here. Oops. And I got some. I'll show you how to fix that if you get glue on it. All right. So we're going to glue half of our die cut like this. And I'm going to um, right about here, I would think. Uh, no, maybe not even there. Sorry, guys. I want to come up towards the top probably more like that here we go and then you want it that this whole area here isn't stuck it's only towards the bottom um, and I have my Tim Holtz sprayer here we go so I just missed a little piece of toilet paper here so I always have paper towels and toilet paper in my um, Craft room. There we go. It'll dry clear anyways. So I just wanted to dab that. There we go. And then um, what I'm going to do is it'll flip like this. And this here will tuck like that in behind here. And sometimes this just needs a little adjustment because it might not want to um, tuck all the way flat see what it's doing so um, that's probably comfortable here so then I can make that little bit of adjustment towards the top and I can crease it with my fingers or I can use a bone folder just like that so then I have this and it's gonna untuck from here and then I can put my papers in there like I, I can tuck them behind here in my little pocket and this here will go right there like that and that'll go in our journal sorry guys it's all wet so it's kind of a hot ass I'll fix that anyways so I just wanted to come live and I wanted to share these two little projects with you guys this was kind of a quick live today I'm usually live for an hour and um, and I wanted to make a little announcement too um, I've dropped um well actually first I want to thank everyone who supported my shop my Etsy shop I cannot thank you guys enough I'm Fifi's digital designs on Etsy and I make um, digital kits. And I wanted to thank everyone for their support in my shop. And um, I've decided that starting um, this month, I have dropped all of my prices in my shop by $2. So my digital kits are now $8 across the board. So I just wanted to share that. And that's with the economy and just the way everything's going. And I figured that might help people. So I just wanted to share that um, I've dropped all my prices by $2 in my shop. Oh, thank you so much, Rachel. Thanks for joining. Hi, Glynis. Thanks for joining. Sorry, I had to go out and come back in, and then I got my comments again. I think I'm having problems with my internet my internet today. So yeah, I've made kind of a hot mess here with my glue. But once I have that dry, I can kind of pick that up. I have um, one of those squares that picks up your glue. So I'll do that. And then I have my medallion here, and then this is how it's going to close. So basically, that's my closure like this. Right like that. And then I can, again, I want to make that little bit of an adjustment so yeah I just want to yeah right like that so it's not affecting my um my medallion closure and you can use any die cut for this I just like to use um 
Tim Holtz some bracelets. I just like how they look and they give it um, like a three-dimensional kind of look. And then I'm going to use um, this here on the sewing machine. So essentially what I'm going to do is um, open it up like this because I have my uh, four sheets like that, which makes eight, eight pages. And then I'm going to put it right into the crease and I'm going to stitch right along here on my sewing machine. So once I do that, it'll all be in here and secure. And then we can finish embellishing it too. Like we can go ahead and we can, um, I have little fussy cuts like this from the, from the, from the kit. I could do that. I could use, um, some sort of, a um, embellishment here. There's so many things that we can do. So I just wanted to share that. And then again, this one here, um, you could put it in here. You could do anything and just kind of tucks into a pocket kind of like that. So it's essentially when you tuck it into a pocket, it's going to sit like this, just like that. All right. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a fabulous week and I will be back on, um, next Wednesday. Yeah. Next Wednesday. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.